In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, it is my, welcome, my pleasure to welcome you here today to St. Augustine's for our second annual White Mass. It's a very happy occasion for me to celebrate this Mass with and for you, our dear healthcare workers. Your, your work, your vocation is more important than ever. Thank God people are realizing that in the midst of the distress of this current pandemic. Special thanks to all of the priests who have joined us today as well to can celebrate this Mass. We come together to ask God's blessing, wisdom, and strength upon you who care for the health of our people. And we are mindful as well of our need of God's forgiveness. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the grace of the Holy Spirit have filled the hearts of your faithful with gifts of charity, grant health of mind and body to your servants, for whom we beseech your mercy, that they may love you with all their strength, and with all their love, do what is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
a reading for the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than one ought to think, but to think soberly, each according to the measure of faith that God has apportioned. For us in one body, we have many parts, and all the parts do not have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. If prophecy in proportion to the faith, if ministry in ministering, if one is a teacher in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortation, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be sincere, hate what is evil, hold on to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones, exercise hospitality. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Will you not instead give us life, and shall not your people rejoice in you? Show us, O Lord, your kindness, and grant us your salvation. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people and to his faithful ones and to those who put in him their hope. The, the Lord, Lord speaks of peace to his people. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For our White Mass this year, we are celebrating the Mass for family and relatives. It's 
uh, one of the masses for special uh, occasions uh, or needs, and uh, as the Roman Missal has, a section of masses for a number of different needs. And the lectionary, corresponding lectionary, has readings corresponding to that mass. Usually, there are a number of choices among Old Testament, New Testament, and Gospel. This time, though, there was only one New Testament reading in the lectionary. And it just so happened to be the one in which St. Paul uses the analogy of a body. So I can't think of a more appropriate scripture passage for a mass with medical professionals than one that is using the body for an analogy. So you are medical professionals, so you know better than I that the body is all interconnected. And a problem in one part of the body can be felt in another part of the body. You know how that is all interconnected. I just know that there are strange phenomena to us laymen. In your profession, I'm a layman, right? If you have a pain in your back and then you have a bad cough, you can feel it in your back. It's all interconnected. And so St. Paul says that we are one body in Christ. We are parts of a body interconnected to each other. He uses this image for our communion. But let us pay close attention to what he says. He says we are one body in Christ. He does not say we are the body of Christ. He says we are one body in Christ. We share a communion in Christ and under him. He is the head of the body. So if I may extrapolate a bit on St. Paul's use of the body as an analogy, the head, that is the brain, that's the part of the body that gives orders to the other parts of the body, as I understand it. Isn't that correct? It gives orders to other parts of the body and receives information from the other parts of the body. And so it, it is with Christ as the head of the church. We send our prayers up to him. He processes that and then gives orders back to us. He gives us orders, though, not to make us slaves. He says something quite different in our gospel reading for this Mass. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, I have called you friends. And so he gives us orders, his commandments, in order to give us an opportunity to be his friends. So we are more than body parts. We are loved by him, and we can know him and love him in return with the love of friendship. But we can do so only if we maintain this communion in him, in his church, and under him as our head. This is how we bear fruit, bearing fruit comes from our status with him as friends. This is why what we are doing here this evening is so important. Spiritual support and growth for Catholic health care workers. As the body is all interconnected, as the church is all interconnected, so is society as a whole. We've seen this interconnectedness in the distress of the current pandemic physical health and economic health, the health of social life. Above all, what is important in a society is spiritual health. We must give primacy to the spiritual in order for a society to be healthy. Because how we relate to one another, how we fulfill the duties of our state in life, how we live out our vocation, that all comes from where we are in our spiritual state. So we need to continue to exercise our most sublime duty as human beings in giving worship to God. We must make sure we do so in a safe way, but we must make sure that we do so. To bear fruit means that the fruit has to be born in the communities where we live our everyday lives. For the vast majority of people, that means most notably in family, and in the workplace, or for some in the school. This is where we show that we are his friends. This is where we bear fruit, 
by doing what he commands us to do. And what does he command us to do? This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is what a Christian society looks like. All living this in accordance with their vocation and state in life. It applies to everyone. I think uh, nowadays of healthcare workers, especially early on in the crisis of the pandemic, who work themselves to exhaustion, at risk to their own health and even their own lives in this pandemic. Some few have even died. As de-Christianized as our society has become, we still see this happening. This tells me we still have the vestiges of what was once a society imbued with Judeo-Christian values. This is what a Christian society looks like. That is why I am thankful to you for your commitment to living your faith in your workplace. Your workplace, providing health care, is one of the most privileged places where the values of our faith can affect people on such a deep level. You understand this. You understand that your role is not only to improve the quality of your patient's life in this world, but above all, to help them improve the quality of their life everlasting. Thank you for forming this chapter of the Catholic Medical Association here in Archdiocese. I'm so appreciated, appreciative of the vision of your founders. It's something that I've been desiring and envisioning for many years, and seeing the great need here in our archdiocese, given what a great center of healthcare and healthcare research we are. We need to imbue this, uh, this uh, vocation, this endeavor of healthcare and healthcare research with the values that come from the gospel. Otherwise, what is quintessentially a Christian work can devolve into something that can be harmful in so many different ways. I pray that this chapter may multiply abundantly with friends of our Lord who will bear fruit for him, fruit for the physical and mental health of their patients, fruit for the spiritual health of our society, and above all, fruit of life in God's kingdom. That life which does not fade, does not grow sick or wither, but is the light, peace, and communion with God, which endures for all eternity. Thankful for all the blessings God has bestowed on us, let us now stand and turn to our generous God with our needs and the needs of the world. For all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, that they will more closely unite themselves with Jesus Christ, the High Priest, as they seek to serve those entrusted to their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For health care workers who selflessly treat COVID-19 patients during this pandemic, may God grant them fortitude and deliver them safely at the end of each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick and hospitalized, that they may feel the healing power of Christ and find comfort and hope in his constant presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all Catholic health care workers, that they may be a light to others and a testament to the word 
as they live their faith and care for their patients. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the uninsured and those who do not have adequate access to health care, that we may respond to their needs with love and compassion and seek creative solutions to bring healing to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the vulnerable and marginalized in society, including those with mental and physical handicaps, that they may always be treated with dignity and respect as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Catholic health care workers, that the Lord may raise them to eternal life on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you have blessed us with life and love, with mercy and goodness. Help us to share that mercy and goodness with the least of our brothers and sisters and to be instruments of your grace to the ends of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Have mercy, O Lord, on your servants, for whom we offer your majesty this sacrifice of praise that through these holy gifts they may obtain the grace of heavenly blessing and the glory of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our prayer, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise is add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuam Annunciamus Domine, Et Tuam Resurrectione Confitemur, Domnec Venias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi, St. Augustine, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be under my breath, but only say the word and my soul shall be with you. For communion, we will have two, three communion stations. All of them will be at the bottom of the steps. The bishop will be in the middle and two priests will be on each side. Please watch your six feet distancing and go one way only. We ask that you please follow the instructions of these hospitality and ushers for each row for proper communion. Please remember to wear your face mask covering and to maintain, again, your six feet physical distance with the person around you. Hand sanitizers are available for you to use. Thank you.
Let us pray. We ask you, Lord, as we receive the divine mysteries, grant your servants to whom you have given a love for us, pardon for sins, consolation in this life, and unfailing guidance, that all of us united in your service may rejoice together before your face, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we conclude, I just uh, first of all wish to um, mention a word of thanks to uh, Father Ray and uh, your parishioners here at St. Augustine. Thank you for your hospitality and hosting this uh, annual white mass here at your parish today. We appreciate all your efforts to welcome us. Also, we have a bowl of St. Luke's medals. St. Luke, of course, the physician, as well as evangelist. And we celebrated this mass on its feast day last year. Uh, so immediately after the dismissal, I will bless these St. Luke medals and they will be made available for you. And so after, the, even though you're dismissed, don't leave because we'll have the blessing. Then we'll sing the Salve Regina together, and then the recessional song. The Lord be with you. With Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made, made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, you approve of the casting of images of your saints in order that when we behold them, we may be led to contemplate and imitate their lives and holiness. Wherefore, we beseech you to bless and sanctify these medals wrought to the memory and honor of your holy evangelist Luke, the beloved physician, and grant that whosoever through the inspiration of this cast image earnestly strives to honor St. Luke may by his merits obtain grace in this life and eternal glory in the next, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcetto, Estes Nostra Salve, Arte Oh, God. 